What's up everybody? Welcome to the first standalone edition of the Mover Mailbag. Uh, been doing the Mover Mailbag on a lot of episodes previously. However, uh, due to some of the length of the videos, I haven't done a Mover Mailbag in a while and I thought it might be a good idea since I'm getting uh, hundreds of emails and even letters, which you'll see today, uh, to actually do it standalone. So um, I might not do it every week, but it will be its own uh, separate upload, um, maybe weekly, maybe a couple times a week, maybe once a month, whatever. Uh, just depends on as I get uh, good letters like this and, and good stuff in the mail, uh, I'll share it with you guys. So uh, skipping right to it, the first uh, letter from the Mover Mailbag, uh, episode one, is actually a no kidding uh, letter, which is surprising in 2019, but uh, it actually makes it mean uh, that much more because this, you know. Uh, Aaron uh, took the time to actually write a no kidding letter, so that's awesome. It says, Dear C.W. Lemoyne, my name is Aaron. I'm a sophomore currently enrolled at uh, Cypress Park High School in Houston. I'm a second year cadet in AFJROTC, and for those of you who don't know, that's uh, Air Force Junior ROTC. So that's uh, for high school. One of my goals in life is to go to college on an AFROTC scholarship and become a pilot in the Air Force and make it into a 20 plus year career. I'm writing you this letter because I'm seeking information and mentoring from you about the process to become a pilot in the Air Force. I found your YouTube channel and the How I Became a Fighter Pilot video was recommended to me. Your YouTube channel has been the greatest find of my life. The greatest advice I've received from you is make them tell you no. I wear glasses and this is a big fear of mine. In your video, Five Myths of Becoming a Fighter Pilot, you talk about the confusion about getting an aerospace aviation degree in college. I recently talked to an Air Force recruiter from the Air Force Academy at an air show in Houston and his advice has totally confused me. He basically told me I need an aerospace engineering degree and that it's basically impossible to receive a pilot slot through ROTC. Once again, I'm reaching out to you because I'm seeking advice and mentoring from you. If you have any time in your busy schedule, please contact me with any information you have. Sincerely, Aaron. Uh, wow. So first off, thanks Aaron for the uh, message. Um, I wish you'd left your email address because this might have been a little bit easier to find you. But uh, for the group, let's talk about uh, some of the things that Aaron brought up because I think it's important to share. So um, first off, I wear glasses. That is a huge fear. Uh, I've talked about it in a couple other videos. Uh, as long as you're correctable to 2020 and uh, the prescription, the diopters are within uh, waiverable limits, uh, which the Air Force Waiver Guide is a good source of that. Uh, you can go up to 2100 now, uh, at least per the ROTC website. Uh, so as long as it used to be 2070 correctable, 2020, now it's 2100. So you've got some leeway. If you wear glasses, it's not a deal breaker. Uh, also LASIK and PRK are waiverable and there, there are ways to do that. So uh, that's the first thing. Yeah, you absolutely can wear glasses. It's not a big deal. Aerospace aviation degree in college. Here's the thing about degrees. Um, I would get something that number one, you're interested in and you can get a good GPA in. And number two, uh, that has some kind of fallback if the flying thing doesn't work out. And what do I mean by that? Something that you know you could go and get a job with um, if you didn't join the military or if you got out of the military, something that can benefit you in the long term. Don't just get the easiest degree. Although you technically, if you had a 4.0 in underwater basket weaving, that would be fine. You would check the square, that's all that you really need. However, uh, I recommend getting something uh, that you can use. I have a, uh, a Bachelor of Science in uh, Business Management and uh, I studied business law and marketing. So those are the two things I did. I have never used it other than through writing and you know having kind of being my own business, if you will, doing this stuff. Uh, I've never actually used that degree, but it's nice to fall back on. You know, I can always go get an MBA or something like that if I needed to and use the GI Bill for that. If you're interested in engineering and you're interested in aviation, Absolutely. Um, aviation degrees in general, they don't do a whole lot for you. Uh, aerospace engineering absolutely will. Uh, there's a lot of jobs out there, a lot engineering in general. It, it, the way it works, if you have an engineering degree or something in a hard science, um, you're, you kind of get a little bit more leeway. Your GPA can be a little bit lower and still be competitive because the people on the boards understand that you know, it's a little bit more difficult. You know, if you have two candidates and one has an aerospace engineering degree and one has 
you know, some philosophy major and one has a 3.0 and one has a 3.0, the engineering degree is going to win because that's a harder major. That's, that's harder to have a good GPA in. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, it's a good fallback. You know, it's, it's definitely something to consider. It's not required. Uh, I talked about it in mine. Uh, about my degree and you know in the last video with Deuce he's got a finance degree um, you know just there's not a lot of it's it's that's definitely a myth that you'd have to have that all right so it's impossible to receive a pilot slot through ROTC false uh, Deuce proved that he was an ROTC guy the pilot slots are divvied up uh, amongst the three commissioning sources this is for active duty uh, Air Force Academy ROTC and OTS which is officer training school there, there's not your chances kind of depend on the needs of the Air Force at the time. So how many pilot slots are given out, what school you're going to. Some schools get more pilot slots than others uh, and just how your ranking is within that, that group. So I don't think it's basically impossible. I think it's very likely to get a pilot slot through ROTC and plenty of people do it. And it's a great way to earn your commission. So I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't worry about that at all. Uh, the Academy is a great opportunity. It's a good place to go to school. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. I you know, recommend it if that's something you want to do. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of misinformation, especially with uh, recruiters in general. Uh, you have to make sure you talk to the right person for the Academy. Uh, Air Force Reserve has this thing called the uh, Academy ALOs, Academy Liaison Officers, I think. Those are actual pilots that their whole job is to go to high schools and, and talk to kids about the Air Force Academy. That's something you, you'd want to talk to. Uh, typically, uh, basic recruiters, especially recruiters that work with the enlisted side, don't know a whole lot about the process of becoming an officer. The officer accessions recruiters are the ones you want to talk to because that's who's, in, who's responsible for that. So, Aaron, uh, you've got a lot of options open to you right now. I mean, you can you can go the ROTC route, you can go Air Force Academy, you can go wait, get your degree, and then either apply to a Guard Reserve unit uh, which I think is a great opportunity because then you know what you're going to fly or you can go uh, OTS and apply for a pilot slot through that. So plenty of options. Uh, I'm really glad that you've uh, found the channel and that you are uh, internalizing the make them tell you no thing because with all these options and everything that, that's going on, the, the biggest critic is going to be yourself. You have to overcome your own doubts and keep pressing and keep pushing and make someone else tell you no, don't self-eliminate. And, you know, especially with this, a recruiter is not gonna be the end source that's gonna tell you no. It's gonna be somebody with a little bit more uh, horsepower that, that's gonna be the final thing. So if a recruiter tells you something that you don't think is right or um, that, you know, discourages you, don't let it. Just keep pushing, keep applying. Eventually you'll find the right information. I'm not saying recruiters are bad. There's nothing wrong with recruiters, I'm just saying. You know, that's that's just step one. There are many other sort steps on there, so don't let that stuff be discouraged. Glad to see, uh, you know, especially at a young age that you're taking interest in this because, um, you know, it's it's a great great career. It's a great opportunity to serve your country, and it's a it's a great place to be, uh, especially in the near future. So. Uh, Anyway, so that's number one. I hope that answers the question. Uh, first, on the mover mailbag, uh, there will be more. In fact, this shirt was from the mover mailbag a couple of weeks ago or months ago. Jeez, it's been a while. But uh, I'll try to do more of these, even from email or um, through the uh, through mail. If you want to mail me something, uh, as Aaron did, uh, PO Box eight five nine four, Mandeville, Louisiana. It's going to be on the screen seven zero four seven zero. I will. Uh, Try to check that as often as possible. If you want something more quickly, Facebook, uh, or you can follow me on Instagram, although it's a little bit harder to get messages through Instagram. And then uh, C.W. Lemoyne at cwlemoyne.com. Uh, I will try to pick some emails and read them too in the coming episode. So uh, if you guys like this, please let me know in the comments. I'll do more uh, mover mailbag, make it more of a regular thing. Uh, also approaching 50,000 subscribers, which is awesome. When I hit 50, uh, for the milestone or whatever, we'll set up a uh, live chat, a live Q&A, and I'll uh, do like I did back at 10,000 and uh, answer questions that you guys have in real time and try to have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.